I traveled to Ireland with a group of Clackamas Community College students during March of 2016. We enjoyed celebrating St. Patrick's Day with the good people of Bundoran, a small town in County Donegal. Interacting with the Institute for Study Abroad, Ireland, we also got to enjoy a great deal of learning. Our lessons were firsthand, they were diverse, and the disciplines involved interwove with one another. A visit to the monument at Tara or Newgrange, or an inspection of the ruins in a local peat bog would mean memories and snapshots to a normal tourist. In contrast, with my fellow college students, I was standing in classrooms that were old before the Egyptian pyramids were constructed. What did I learn besides some photography practicum? Geology student that I am, I noted the limestone and quartzite in the structure stones. The larger stones are glacial erratics. Ireland was once covered in flowing ice. Before that, the land was covered by ocean. I referenced the Mohs scale, which measures rock and mineral hardness. Topaz, conundrum, and diamond are among those harder than quartzite. The art students with us noted how the stones are carved and decorated in places. An anthropology student might remind us that Neolithic people only had other stones to form shapes. An engineering student would marvel at how the capstones could be transported and then lifted into place. The mathematics student could explain the process of measuring the sun's movement to which these edifices are aligned. Students of philosophy and religion could theorize why these ancient people built the structures. Those interested in archaeology came away with appreciation of how the ruins were discovered, studied, and preserved. The ancient people involved with the construction were tribal hunter-gatherers. The horticulture student can see the remains of five or six thousand year old farm fields. They will learn what was grown then and how. The sociology student can contemplate the family and group dynamics involved with these people. Those interested in the fields of health would be interested in their diet, general health and life expectancies. Those are Stone Age bone fragments that the tour guide has pointed out among the ruins. The blacksmith's forge at the center of one ruin is nowhere as old as its surroundings. Maybe it's only a couple thousand years old. Even welding and metalwork students could come away with the visit with a new perspective. Jewelry artisans certainly will. Then there are those of us who are the writers, poets, and musicians. How many pieces of original art and literature will come about from the experience of our studying abroad? What will be the effect on those who see and hear what we produce? I, for one, am more than halfway through writing a novel with my Irish counterpart, a student named Teresa. These experiences, these lessons, do not simply come from the pages of a book or an electronic display in a classroom. The students, myself included, were climbing over the ancient stones, crawling through the peat bogs, walking the same land and breathing the same air as the Neolithic Irish. This just describes the first days of our visit. The next lessons involved elsewhere were included the mythology of the land, the introduction of Christianity, the colonial period, the migration of its people, the country's growth following independence, the politics, the economy, the art, the music, the literature, and so much more. This is just the tip of the iceberg. How did these people and what they accomplished lead to who the Irish are today? How have they affected who and what we in Oregon are today? Ireland and so many other places in our world invite us to come and see and learn for ourselves.